All right, check this thing out. I've got this executable file here, and if I show you its properties, you can clearly see it's an exe file. Now if I double click this, apparently nothing happens, but if I go to my Kali Linux running inside my virtual machine, which was listening for connections, you can see we've successfully got a shell. And if I show you, I'm using the latest version of Windows 11, and as you can see, Defender is working properly. I haven't turned the active virus and threat protection off, it's running as it is. And you can see, with just a double click, we've got a shell on this fully updated Windows 11 system. If I show you my Kali Linux, you can see I can run any command and do further things. I'm going to tell you how I created this thing, but before that, if you're new here, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. And maybe if you want to learn hacking and cybersecurity, you can check out the first link in the description. Also, this video is made only for educational purposes. This tool is made for research purposes only. Don't commit crimes. All right, so you may actually be a bit surprised if I tell you that this backdoor was made using some Python code. But one may question, if it is written in Python, does Python need to be installed on the victim's computer for the backdoor to execute? The answer is simple. No, we don't need Python installed on the victim's computer. As I've shown you, it's an exe file, not a py file, so we don't need Python installed, but we need Python to create this backdoor. I'm going to tell you in a while how, but let's have a look at the code of this backdoor and try to understand it. So I've opened this door.py in my Sublime Text Editor, and there is also another file in my Kali Linux that plays an important function here, so we'll have a look at it in a moment. But before that, let's read this code. So first, we're importing some modules like the socket module, which is necessary for making a connection with the attacker, subprocess to run system commands, and a few others. You can search about them yourself. Next, we specify some variables like this key one. This is very important. Keep it in mind. I'll show you where we're using it. Next, we have encrypted host and encrypted port variables, which have these base64 values, and I've got them from that other Python file I was talking about before. Don't worry if things are going above your head, you'll get everything clear in a moment. After this, we have the most important function, which is like the core of why this backdoor is kind of undetectable. This is named xor underscore decrypt and is doing some maths here. You don't need to understand it. For now, just understand that these two base64 values are encrypted via xor encryption, and this function decrypts them by using this key variable. After we have this function, we use it for encrypted host and encrypted port, and put them in host and port variables respectively. Next, we've got these few lines of code for hiding the console window. You saw that no window popped up when I double-clicked that back door. This snippet is responsible for that. Next on, we've our reverse shell function, which is actually responsible for executing our commands on the system and sending outputs to the attacker computer. Next on, we use threadings to keep this function running, and lastly, for keeping the application active, we use this. If I show you the other Python file, we use it to get these base64 encoded values here. In that file, we've our IP and port, the attacker's IP and port, the one to which the reverse shell will connect back, and a key which is exactly the same as in our door.py file, and this encrypt function which will encrypt this IP and port and spit out a base64 value. If I run this using Python 3, you can see it has printed some values. Now, what I can do is to copy this base64 value for host and port here and put them in our door.pi. We need to specify the attacker IP here, so be careful. We can also use some tunneling, which we're going to do in a while, so stay tuned. Okay, so now we have this door.pi, but it's a Python file. How can we convert it into an exe file? Well, it's simple. First, you need to install Python in your system. You can easily do that from the Microsoft Store. Once you download Python, you can open up your terminal and type this command to check if it is installed. Once you see the version of Python, we need to install PyInstaller. With this, you can create an executable file for Windows just from Python codes. Just type pip install PyInstaller and once installed, we can spin up this command to make our executable file. Let's break this command. We type Python 3 first and then dash m to specify our PyInstaller module and then dash dash one file for making a single executable file only, and then no console for no flashing terminal window, and then finally our door.pi. And if I press enter now, you can see it's working. It won't take much long, and here we go. It says build complete, and we've our exe file in our dist folder. If I check my dist folder, you can see we've our door.exe here. I'll execute this in a moment, but before that, let's start our listener on Kali Linux. So here in my Kali Linux, 
I can easily start the listener by typing this command and now netcat is listening on this port. And if I run this door.xa file, here we go, we've got shell access to a fully updated Windows 11 system with just clicks. I can type dir and you can see it showing our directory files and do whatever I want. Well, I might not be able to share these codes publicly. If you can read them from the video, well and good. If not, you can check out System32, which has codes for everything I create. Also, we have a private community where we just talk about hacking and cybersecurity, so please check it out by the first link in the description. Okay, so now I've done basic tunneling using only my internet, which will forward all the traffic coming to port 4455 of my public IP to this Netcat server here. Now, if I put my public IP into this Python file on our Linux machine, keep the port the same, and then run this file, you can see we have got some values again. By the way, I am using my public IP here for tunneling, which is not safe, but you can use services like Ingrok, Local Expose, and others. Those are a better option. Now, if I copy this encrypted host base 64 address and put that here in a new door2.py file, which has exactly the same content as door.ppy, but with the IP changed to my public IP, if we save this and run pyinstaller on this, you can see that our binary is being compiled. Here we go, we have our door2.exe, and if I run this while my listener is already running in Kali Linux, you can see I've got a connection. If you carefully notice, the connection is from the local IP of my router. This means that our port forwarding is working and our backdoor can even run on the World Wide Web. Well, this was just an example. I am not going to harm anybody with this, and you shouldn't either. With a few more features, this thing can be turned into something even more dangerous, like an attacker adding features such as process transfer, persistence, and many other capabilities. An attacker can also inject the code into legitimate applications and serve them online via phishing. Let's look at an example of this simple backdoor. If an attacker sends this to someone via email or any other source and somehow convinces them to click it, they won't even know they're compromised. I tried to run a virus scan as well, but it still didn't detect it. Attackers can infect many computers with this and can build their own C2 servers to control many machines at the same time. Stay safe, and if you see any malicious process running in your taskbar, kill it quickly. That's all for this video. I hope you liked it. If you did, make sure to subscribe to this channel and like this video, as I often post content like this. If you're serious about learning hacking and cybersecurity, check out the first link in the description. You'll get everything there. Access to all my guides and courses for free cybersecurity notes and resources, and access to a private community where we talk about hacking and security. Search other videos for discount codes. We've got tons there. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Till then, happy hacking.